welcome to part 1 of a Premiere Training Revision video that looks at linear programming. Many people worry when they hear mathematical terms such as linear programming, but many of these terms are just technical phrases used to explain relatively simple processes. And linear programming is just a technical phrase that describes the process of representing data using a straight line. And this can either be using a formula, which we'll look at in part 2 of this video, or using a graph, which we'll look at first. Linear programming is particularly useful in situations where we have two different products with two different limiting factors. For instance, there may be a limit on the amount of material we can acquire, and at the same time, a limit on the number of labour hours available for production. And linear programming methods can help us work out the optimum production plan needed to maximise contribution. Let's look at an example. Let's take two products which require the same type of material and labour, the alpha and the beta. The alpha sells for £84, and the beta £87. The same material is used for both products, and costs £3 per kilogram, and we're told that the alpha requires 6 kilograms, which will cost £18, and the beta 9 kilograms which will therefore cost £27. Labour costs £12 per hour, and the Alpha needs 3 hours of labour time, which will cost £36, and the Beta needs 2 hours of labour time, which will cost £24. And using this data, we can now work out the contribution per unit for both products. When planning for the next period, the business has learnt that the total materials that can be sourced will be limited to 5,940 kilograms, and that labour will also be limited to 1,800 hours. To plan how best to use these limited resources, we first need to calculate the contribution per kilogram for each product. For the alpha, this will be 30 pounds the contribution, divided by 6 kilograms, which is £5 per kilogram. And for the beta, it's £36, divided by 9 kilograms, which is £4 per kilogram. Now, let's do the same for labour, and calculate the contribution per hour for each product. For the alpha, this is £30, divided by 3 hours, which is £10 per hour, and for the beta, it's £36 divided by 2 hours, which is £18 per hour. Now, this leaves us with a bit of a conundrum. We can see that the contribution per kilogram of material is better for the alpha, but that the contribution per labour hour is better for the beta. Had the contribution from material and labour been both better for one product only, you would simply make as much of that product as possible, and none of the other. But in this example, it isn't so clear cut. However, we can use linear programming to determine the mix of product which produces the most contribution overall. Let's first consider the problem of limited materials. We know that every alpha requires 6 kilograms of material, and every beta 9 kilograms. We also know that whatever the best product mix might be, we'll be using all the available material. Therefore, it must be true that the total limited materials, 5,940 kilograms, must equal the total number of alphas produced times 6 kilograms, plus the total number of betas produced times 9 kilograms. And we can write this in shorthand. Let's use the letter A for the number of alphas, and B for the number of betas. And doing this, we end up with a formula 6A plus 9B equals 5940 kilograms. 
Now we have this equation, we can use it to work out some possible scenarios, which in a moment we can plot on a graph. Let's assume we make no alphas at all, so a equals zero. This would mean that the betas, which need 9 kilograms of material per unit, would use up all 5,940 kilograms of material. 5,940 divided by 9 is 660, which means we could make 660 units of beta if we made no alphas at all. At the other extreme, let's suppose we chose not to make any betas. That is, b equals 0. Each alpha requires 6 kilograms of material, and 5,940 divided by 6 kilograms is 990, meaning we could produce 990 alphas if we chose to make no betas. And now we have two points we can plot on a graph. We'll plot the alphas vertically and the betas horizontally. And we'll show a suitable scale representing the number of units. We could just as easily plot them the other way around, but ultimately it won't make any difference to our answer. We showed that when there were no alphas produced, we could make 660 betas with the available material. And this would be the point here on the graph. We also showed that when there were no betas produced, we could produce 990 alphas. And that's this point on the graph. And we can draw a line between the two points. Now, let's go back and follow the same process for our limited labour hours. Like materials, we were told that labour is also a limited resource, with only 1800 hours available for production. Using our data, we can see that every alpha requires 3 hours of labour, and every beta 2 hours of labour. And that's with our limited materials, Whatever the best product mix ends up being, we can assume that we'll be using all the labour hours available to produce our output. Therefore, we know that the total labour hours available, 1800, must equal the total number of alphas produced times 3 hours plus the total number of betas produced times 2 hours. And once again, this can be written in shorthand. 3a, or alphas, plus 2b, or betas, equals 1800 hours. So, using this new equation, we can see that if there are no alphas made, then all the time will be spent making betas. 1800 hours divided by the 2 hours it takes to make each beta, means we can make 900 betas if we don't make any alphas. And if we choose not to make any betas, then with our 1800 available hours, we could make 600 alphas at 3 hours each. And now we have another two points we can plot on our graph. Here's the point when we make no alphas, and we choose to make as many betas as possible. And here's the point when we make no betas, and we choose to make as many alphas as possible. And again, let's draw a line between the two points. We now have an intersection between the two lines. And this is what we've been working towards. Importantly, this point shows us what combination of products alpha and beta maximises contribution and makes the most profit from our limited resources. Using the graph, we can estimate that we should make roughly 290 alphas and around 460 betas to maximise contribution. Of course, if we drew the graph more clearly, or on a larger scale, we could get a more accurate figure. And in the next video, we'll continue our look at linear programming 
with a look at how to arrive at the same answer more accurately using simultaneous equations. I hope you found this video helpful, and thanks for watching.